a very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers in christ so we thank our uh, almighty god uh, and uh, lord and savior jesus christ for giving this wonderful opportunity to study his wonderful words of life uh, so last uh, few weeks we have been studying about uh, you see the important topic about uh, tongues uh, miracles uh, you see uh, visions especially last week we studied about uh, tongues so through the scriptures uh, we came to know that tongues uh, is a understandable language and tongues is not uh, a unknown language which nobody knows you see that was clearly seen uh, through the acts of the apostles uh, way when the first time the holy spirit came uh, the apostles uh, spoke in uh, you see various languages which uh, other people uh, you see clearly understood they identify that they spoke in their own language so that is the the meaning of a uh, tongues understandable language therefore even today when we tell uh, which is a mother tongue what do you mean that means uh, our you see uh, the language in which we were uh, born and brought up uh. so apostle paul uh, clearly mentioned uh, church of corinthian the uh, tongues was a sign for uh, you see uh, uh, unbelievers not for the believers uh. you see today many people mean misunderstand that that is the sign of the holy spirit uh, no that is not the sign of the holy spirit uh. you see the sign of the holy spirit uh, is the uh, fruits of the holy spirit uh, not uh, these uh, you see signs uh. and uh, apostle paul clearly set uh, a sign and uh, you see a rule that if anybody wants to speak in tongue in a church it should be maximum by two or three and one should interpret it if there is no interpreter then uh, it is better to keep quiet and uh, apostle uh, paul gives example of uh, you see uh, various uh, uh, you see dear brethren various uh, music uh, uh, instruments uh, and mentions as all the musical instruments has got a meaning he gives various examples of various types of trumpet so similarly all the languages in this world as a meaning there is no language which is which is without meaning so if anybody is speaking in a language which we can't understand you see but uh, you see it can be understood by them that is a unknown language to me you see uh, therefore dear brother but that but to god of course he understands all the languages he is the one who has created mankind and made them to settle in all the you see places of the world therefore in a church if anybody has to speak he has to speak in a understandable language or else if he speaks in a language which nobody understand but he can understand it's an understandable language you see it is his own mother tongue then so there should be somebody to interpret his language in the other person's language so they can also understand so tongues is a understandable language it is not a unknown language at all therefore dear brethren you see that one we clearly understood but today what we see in the churches that as people speak on uh, you see in a language which nobody understands uh, just blabbering that is not the tongues which a bible speaks that is a total deception you see what is happening now because god has spoken uh, to many prophets uh, abraham moses but god never used this uh, type of language which nobody can understand uh, which neither moses or abraham understood uh, you see and moreover uh, the bible says that, that there is a uh, tongues of uh, angels uh, what is this tongue of angel there should be a single uh, language you can't be a multiple language and each and every time an angel comes he brings a new language from heaven it should be one language if there is a language dear brethren then why don't uh, you see the brethren who claim that uh, the angels have spoken to them they want to translate it on a print a book so that everybody can understand the angels language you see therefore dear brethren satan is trying to deceive all the christians uh, from the true path to the false path therefore we should study the word of god uh, you see uh, therefore these blabberings uh, you see what they speak in tongues uh, is actually done by the child you see who doesn't know to express himself properly so this uh, uh, tongues uh, is can be claimed as a tongue which uh, is written in the bible and moreover jesus was the one who was filled with the holy spirit how many times did he spoke in tongues not even once you see and uh, jesus uh, you see never uh, told that uh, you go and speak in tongues in all over the world you see dear brethren this was a gift uh, given uh, for the only to the particular initial part of the church so the church can go and preach the word of god in different languages in different places uh, because uh, how will the truth go to whole world when the different languages uh, like for example uh, thomas came to india already uh, speak in malayali language 
it is only because of uh, you see this grace of god uh, this gift which god had given therefore dear brethren <clears throat> tongues uh, today what we see is total confusion and god is not the author of confusion so tongues is a clearly understandable language okay now let us come to our uh, second portion about miracles you see dear brethren so miracles today we see that lot of miracles happening uh, you see the blind uh, getting their eyes uh, you see the ear the deaf getting their ears uh, the lame uh, you see seeming to be walking uh, all these things and all so many people uh, you see uh, seeing these things <clears throat> you see they have uh, trusted uh, that uh, this is things are happening from the lord so before uh, you see coming to this conclusion uh, see let us uh, see what the scripture says because initially when we read the this uh, and we started the class uh, we read the but the verse uh, which is written in matthew 7 chapter 21 and 22 let us read that verse again matthew 7 21 22 uh, can anybody read matthew 7 21 22 can any of the brethren read peter brother or binod brother anybody Okay, sir, I will read. Uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 7. 21 and 22. 21 and 22. Okay, sir. Okay. Not everyone who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of Father who is, who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophecy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name performs many miracles. Men. See, in that day, you see, many people will come and claim, uh, did we not do miracles in your name? But Jesus clearly tells uh, you workers of iniquity, you see, I know you not. Uh, then it is our duty to see if it is really done, yeah, you see, by the Lord. Because here this verse says, many shall come and say in that day that we have done uh, miracles in your name. So, doing miracles in the name of Jesus, who does it? Uh, definitely none other religion does it in the name of Jesus. It is the Christians uh, who do it in the name of Jesus. Then, if Jesus has warned, it is our duty to study as per the Bible. Okay. Now, let us uh, take a few moments and see the miracles which actually Jesus did. Read, you see, John 9 chapter, verse 1 and verse 6 and 7, where, uh, you see, the blind was given the sight. Uh, John 9 chapter, verse 1. Peter, brother, can you read? You're there? John, yes, yes. Hmm. John 9 was 1 okay yeah and as Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his spot when he had thus spoken he uh, spat on the ground and made splash on the spital and he uh, anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go was into the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sin. He went his way, therefore, and was. Very good, brother. Thank you. So here, you see, what uh, happened was that Jesus healed a person who was uh, blind from birth. Blind from birth means what? Uh, you see? Uh, not that he had eyes, boy uh, balls were there, but uh, everything was okay, but he could not see. No, not like that. Uh, person was born blind means uh, the eye sockets itself was, uh, you see, empty. He did not have anything in the eye sockets, no eyes, boy balls were there. Hence, uh, he took some, uh, you see, mud uh, and he mixed it with his, uh, you see, spittle, you see, and... Uh, completely covered it with that uh, space, uh, you see, uh, instead of the eyeball. And what happened? Uh, once he was told to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, 
as he was washing in front of everybody the eyeballs began to grow this is the miracle which jesus did a born blind who never had eyeballs at all you see he his eyeballs began to grow in front of everybody okay next miracle you see matthew 12 chapter verse 10 and 13 uh, binor brother can you read it here the record is given of the healing of a withered hand uh, binor brother can you read matthew 12 10 and 13 okay sir and behold there was a man which had his hand okay withered and they asked him saying is it lawful to heal on the sabbath day that they might excuse him then said he to the man stretch forth thine hand and he stretched it forth and it was restored whole like as the other he restored whole like as the other that means what he had a withered hand that means one hand was correct it had a clear hand but the other hand was a very short hand it was withered it was not completely grown so as soon as jesus touched in front of everybody in front of everybody on the spot there itself what happened it began to grow and began to grow same as the other hand it seems both hand become equal in front of everybody never took any time never did you tell okay you go to the doctor now come after test again next time you come no 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 on the spot dear brethren in front of everybody as jesus just touched the hand see imagine the withered and just began to grow in front of everybody that is the miracle with jesus did let us read one more miracle about the hatchback woman you see as soon as jesus touched her she stood straight you see not partially straight who half she came and half later no, no 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 on the spot in front of everybody read luke 13 chapter 11 to 13 luke 13 chapter verses 11 to 13 uh, ashish brother can you read brother okay uh, peter brother okay <clears throat> Luke thirteen eleven to thirteen. Yeah. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on. For and immediately he was bent straight and glorified God. Very good. You see, so what happened was that as soon as Jesus touched her on the spot, dear brethren, she was made straight, not partially straight. Then she became all right and perfect. No, 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 hundred percent straight, dear brethren. That was the miracle which Jesus did on the spot. let us read one more incident you see where uh, you see a woman who had uh, uh, you see the flow of uh, blood for it almost nearly you see uh, 12 years and she had spent all of her money as soon as she touched that you see the hem of uh, jesus cloth what happened she was totally healed on the spot You see, she could realize that hundred percent. Ah, you see, healing was done. See, that was uh, the miracle which Jesus did. Let us read the verse. Ah, uh, Matthew nine chapter was twenty to twenty-two. Ah, uh, Binod brother, can you read Matthew nine twenty to twenty-two? Matthew ah uh, nine twenty to twenty-two. Okay, sir. And behold, a woman which was ah uh, diseased with an issue of blood. Twelve years came behind him and touched the uh, hem of his garment, for she said within herself, uh, "Herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole." But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, "Daughter, be of good comfort; thy faith 
had made the whole and the omen was made whole from that hour. Mm. Okay, finish with that? Yes, sir. Ah, see, here you see, huh? on the spot, uh, you see, huh? what happened? Uh? Huh? He was, she was healed. Uh. That was uh, the miracle of Jesus. She, she did not tell, okay, I feel better. Uh, and he did not tell, okay, go to the doctor, check it and come back. Nothing, uh, dear brother. You see, on the spot, uh, dear brother. She was completely healed, not partially healed. Uh. You see, uh, let us read one more incident. Uh, you see, uh, it is given in Luke 17 chapter 12 to 14. Uh, let us read uh, verse uh, 13 and 14. Read verse 14 only, brother. Huh? 14 only? Uh. Okay. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on all us. Continue, continue. And when he saw them, he, uh, he, then he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were clean, clean, cleansed. Ah, right. As they went, what happened? They were cleansed. So when, did they, when were they cleansed? You see, they were never cleansed at, uh, you see, Huh? Later, you see, on the spot, as they went, they were cleansed. Imagine, we all know leprosy is not so easy. You see, leprosy actually completely, you see, eats our uh, bones, muscles, everything. So, you, they were completely deformed. You see, everything was totally gone. But actually, as Jesus said, go and show to the high priest. On the way, just they took few steps, probably at a five, ten steps, that's all. So, what happened? As they went, they were healed. In front of everybody, dear brother, and all the eaten muscles began to grow. The fingers became normal. The face became very clear. Imagine the feeling. Imagine the scene. That is the miracle where Jesus did. Not that, oh, okay, come, I'll touch you, I'll heal you. Oh, I'm feeling better. Okay, but don't worry. Again, in one, one more week, you'll be completely healed. Nothing on the spot, 100% healing. Let us read one more incident. We know this one very well. You see, many soldiers came to arrest Jesus. Sir. And uh, you see, one of them was a servant of the high priest. His name is Malkos. You see, he began to, you see, touch uh, Jesus to arrest him. So immediately, what did Peter do? Peter took a knife, uh, you see, uh, took a sword and actually smote his ears. Sir. Actually, his target was for his neck. By Mr. What happened? Uh, ear got chopped off. Uh, what happened? Uh, what did Jesus say? You see, Jesus told Peter to keep back the sword. And what did Jesus do? What did Jesus do with the ears? Did he tell him to go to the doctor? What did he do? Tell me, Peter brother, Vinod brother, tell me, what did Jesus do with the ears? Huh? He touched and healed. Ah, he touched and healed. You see, the ear which was fallen down, Jesus took it, you see, put it back in the same place on the spot. What happened? Operation was done. Without any anesthesia, without any stitches, you see, super glue. Within seconds, operation was done. 100% healing was over. Patient was discharged. This is the miracle which Jesus did. Now tell me, which miracle in this world, you see, is being done like this one? Dear brethren, on the spot, 100 out of 100% healing, completely healed. Read Luke 22, 51. Luke 22, 51. Peter, brother, can you read? Okay. Pinar, brother, can you read? Uh, Luke 22? 51. Okay. 50, 51. Okay, sir. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear 
And Jesus an, uh, answered and said, Suffer ere yeah, thus far, and he touched his ear and healed him. Amen. Mm. On the spot, uh, he was completely healed. He was, and then he, you know what happened? He arrested Jesus and went on. You see, with a healthy condition. Dear brethren, is it so easy that it will happen now? This is the miracle with Jesus, dear brethren. And other things, you see, Jesus uh, healed the deaf and the dumb. How? You see, not that uh, the dumb were uh, healed and uh, they began to speak. Uh, okay, 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 I'm speaking. Uh, okay, okay. And uh, you can, they told, uh, no, no, come after next week. I'll do one more healing and uh, other 50% you'll be improved. No. The dumb clearly spoke. You see, that the blind, you know, you see, he was totally blind. He could not see anything. He was never seen anything from this birth. What happened? His eyes was open with water. He told, okay, I can see, I can see a little bit, little bit. Huh? Clearly identified. You see, what was there in front of him? That was the miracle, David Ryan, that Jesus did. David Ryan, you know, tell me, how many of the miracles happen like this? You see? And uh, moreover, you see, such crowd is there. You see, more than 10,000, 15,000 lakhs of people gathered together. You see, but how many people are healed? Or all people are healed? No. You see, only selected people, only few people whom they call from the pulpit. You see, only those people are healed. Not everybody are healed, dear brethren. Only selected people only. Dear brethren, you see, when they ask uh, why they're not healed, you simply they will tell that, oh, they don't have faith. That is the reason they're not healed. Okay. You see, if they don't have faith, then why would they ever come for the meeting? You see, will they come for the meeting with faith? They had faith. That is the reason they have come for the meeting. Okay. If you know that they have, don't have faith, you should be knowing that. No? Because God has told you everything. Then you should have told them you don't have faith. Increase your faith and come for the next time. Where you come wasting your time this time. You see. And moreover, did Jesus heal only for the persons who have faith? No. Even for the Persons who had unbelief, even for them, Jesus helped them. Read Mark 9, chapter 23 and 24. Mark 9, chapter 23 and 24. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read? You're there? Okay, okay. Uh, Jesus said unto him, If thou can, cannot believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And straight away the father of the child carried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help them my unbelief. Mm, not I believe, but uh, help though my unbelief. I, I'm not able to believe, Lord, but I want to believe. That was his uh, unbelief condition. But Jesus helped them. Imagine so many people come for this uh, meetings, huge crowd. Do they come for without belief? At least they have faith, no? What did Jesus say? How much your faith should be? No need to have a big, huge mountain faith. No. Small mustard seed, that is sufficient. Do you think these people don't even have such faith? Dear brethren, you should think. And moreover, how many people did Jesus heal? Jesus healed everybody. Not even one person was left without being healed. Let us read a few verses. Uh, Binar brother, can you read Matthew 4, 23 and 24? Okay, sir, I will read Ma Matthew uh, 4, 23 and 24. Hmm. And Jesus went about all, uh, all Galilee, uh, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people and his fame went throughout all three years, and uh, they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with driver uh, diseases and torment and those which were possessed uh, with devil huh? and those huh? which were uh, lunatic, uh, lunatic. And mm. those that had the palsy, the palsy, and he healed them. Amen. Healed them. Amen. 
healing all manner of sickness underlying not healing few manner of sickness every disease dear brother whatever disease may be 100% out of 100% they were healed read one more verse matthew 8:16 brother uh, brother continue brother reading matthew 8:16 also okay when the even was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and yeah, and heal all that were sick all and, underline all 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 the people were healed dear brethren you take out all the verses in the bible and refer everywhere it is given all were healed all were healed but today only a few and moreover they have meetings huh? only fasting and praying why jesus did fasting and praying where did jesus do fasting and praying jesus did feasting and praying 4000 people were fed 5000 people are fed but today no feeding only taking only collecting you see dear brethren and uh, in the name of prayer but jesus did not collect anything dear brethren he prayed you see he offered food for everybody many people they claim that uh, jesus himself mentioned uh, that uh, those who believe on me they shall do greater works than me because uh, of uh, john 14 12 jesus told those words so let us understand this meaning of this verse uh, peter brother can you read john 14 12 brother in 12 hmm Okay, I will just open John fourteen twelve. Okay. Here it's it's written here. Okay. You can read from the screen also. Okay, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. Ah, you see, he that believes on me shall do greater things. You see, than Jesus is himself. Now tell me, among all the miracles which Jesus did, which is the greatest of all the miracles? it is the rising of the dead no man can do any greater miracle than this one rising of the dead he raised the three persons back to life from the dead you see but nobody can do any greater miracle than this one yeah? but jesus told you shall do that means there must definitely be one more miracle which is greater than what jesus did which is that miracle you see dear brethren Jesus opened many persons uh, literal eyes but did he open anybody's uh, eyes of understanding no Jesus said he that has eyes let him see but Jesus has given us the privilege to open other people's eyes of understanding the eyes of understanding is been given to brethren you see read Ephesians 118 Ephesians 118 binod brother can you read Ephesians 118 yes i read Ephesians one eighteen, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. See, eyes that... of understanding being enlightened. This eyes of understanding, opening this eyes by showing the word of God. You see, this privilege God has given to the body members of Christ. Even the ears of understanding. You see, Jesus never opened anybody's ears of understanding. What did Jesus say? He that has eyes, let him see. He that has ears, let him hear. but god has given us this privilege to open everybody's eyes and ears of understanding and you see jesus raised the literal people from back, dead back to life but god has given us the privilege to you see uh, raise the living dead back to life in christ you see jesus healed so many people no everybody were healed but what did the people do did they follow jesus no they all left jesus and went off nobody was there with them You see, only the twelve apostles were there. Even one of them betrayed him. But today, the church is given the opportunity 
to heal everybody of their sin sickness you see to raise them from the dead condition to the world and back to life in christ and live in the christian path of life in a narrow way this is the greatest miracle which uh, you see is greater than what jesus did jesus did only for the 12 apostles but we are told to do for the whole world you see go and preach to the ends of the world and make them disciples this is the greater opportunity brethren see let us read uh, romans 8:11 peter brother can you read romans 8:11 okay <clears throat> but if the spirit of him that rise of jesus from the dead Dwell in you, he that rise of Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelt in you. See, quicken also your dead body by the spirit which is in you. You see, read Acts 26.18. Acts of the Apostles 26.18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me. Ah, see, to open their eyes, to turn from darkness to light, from power of Satan to God. This is the greatest miracle there, Buddha. And you see, with Jesus told the church we do. You see, therefore, dear Buddha, you see, and uh, one more thing you need to observe in the Bible is that neither any of the apostles not Jesus prayed for themselves. You see, we remember very well. You see, when Jesus prayed in Garden of Gethsemane, he requested God that if it be thy will, let this cup pass away from me. Did Jesus, uh, you see, keep on, kept on praying? Did he do and fight with God until his prayer was answered? No. What did Jesus pray? Huh? Father, not my will, let thine will be done. That was the prayer of Jesus. Similarly, brethren, our prayer should never be for selfish prayer. We are going to see the prayer subject in coming days, God willing. But here, Jesus never prayed for the miracles for himself. Neither did the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul had so much of power that uh, his kerchief was given. Even the dead would uh, come back to life. Uh, even the person who were all sick, they were healed. But what about Apostle Paul? Uh, he could not, uh, you see, heal himself. Uh, he had a thorn in his flesh. He requested God uh, that this thorn be taken away from him. He requested God uh, three times. Uh, but did God answer his prayer? No. You see, then did the Apostle Paul quarrel with God? No. Let us read 2 Corinthians 12 chapter. You see, uh, 7 to 10. Uh, Binod, brother, can you read 2 Corinthians 12 chapter verses 7 to 10, brother? Yes, sir. Corinthians, sir. Hmm. First Corinthians, sir. Second Corinthians, 12th chapter, uh, verses 7 to 10. Okay, sir. Verses 7, 7, to 7 to 10. Okay, yeah. sir. Okay. Or, uh, or because of this uh, sur uh, surprisingly great uh, revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming consited, I was given a throne in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Hmm. Therefore, I will boost all the more gladly about my weaknesses, hmm. so that... See, Christ's power may rest on me. Ah, see, clearly he mentions, uh, there's a thorn in my flesh. He prayed thrice. Uh, you see, did he uh, ask for miracles for himself? No. See the trials and the tribulations and the persecutions with Apostle Paul mentions in 2 Corinthians 11 chapter 24 to 25. How many times his ship, ship was wrecked up? How many times he was beaten with rod? How many times he was chastised? Dear brethren, none of the apostles uh, prayed selfishly for miracles uh, because they knew that all these things were permitted by the Lord. You see, many of the faithful Christian martyrs, Peter, he died. Uh, he was crucified upside down. Paul's head was, you see, chopped off. 
you see many of the christians were burnt alive dear brethren in all these things they proved faithfulness to god you see instead of uh, begging for a uh, lot of things and all we should have faith in the lord what does jesus say first seek the kingdom of god eh, and his righteousness then what will happen now all the other things will be given to you so it is our duty to first do the lord's work if we are seeing the lord's work and it's a responsibility in his uh, kingdom and his righteousness definitely all other things will be definitely added and given the brethren there is no need to worry at all you see what does the bible say you see god would never uh, give us a temptation or, or a trial which we can't bear but with the trial he would definitely help us uh, to bear it or he will definitely open as a way to escape out of it so read first corinthians 10 chapter 13th verse uh, First Corinthians ten thirteen. Uh, Peter brother, you are there. Can you read? Okay, okay. Hmm. And there had no temptation taken you, but such as in common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer for you to be tempted above that they are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that they may be able to bear it. Uh huh. You see. God is faithful. Underline it, dear brethren. God is faithful. No need for us to beg at all. He will definitely open a way for escape even as the temptations come. What did Jesus tell? You are more worthy than the sparrows. You see, the sparrows don't even sow, don't even reap, don't even do anything. But God gives them the food. And you are more worthy than sparrows, Jesus told in Matthew 6, 26. And what did Jesus say in Matthew 10, 30? Even the very hairs of your head are numbered. What does it mean? Dear within the small, small things which we neglect in our life. You see, do we worry really if our one hair falls when you are combing our head? No. You see, but these small things are monitored by our Lord, dear brethren. That means nothing in the God's children life is an accident. So if something happens, it is permitted of the Lord. Therefore, what did Apostle Paul tell in Hebrews? You see, he told, don't worry. Have faith in the Lord. Because he has promised, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Read Hebrews 13.5. Binod brother, can you read Hebrews 13.5? Sir, Hebrews 13.5 says, Let your conversations be without conventiousness and be content with such thing as a have for he had said i will never leave thee nor forsake thee amen hmm. let your conversation be without covetousness say i have told you i will never leave thee nor forsake thee dear brethren whenever god will never leave us never forsake us Dear brethren, if Jesus himself had persecutions, trials, temptations in his life, how about us? It is definitely required, dear brethren. Why was it permitted in Jesus' life to prepare Jesus for that, you see, the seat next to the throne of God? Read Hebrews 2.10. Hebrews 2.10. Uh, Ashish, brother, you are there. Can you read Hebrews 2.10? Okay, brother. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things, bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Mm, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So Jesus was made perfect only because of sufferings. He was always obedient and perfect. Even then he became you know, super perfect. How? The things which he suffered, if sufferings were necessary in his life, how about us, dear brethren? Therefore, the Bible says, if anybody lives godly in Christ, he shall suffer persecution. Definitely, that is a must condition. Read 2 Timothy 3.12. 2 Timothy 3.12. Peter, brother, can you read? Okay. 2 Timothy 3.12. Okay, yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. Everybody who lives uh, godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. So that is a must. 
not that it may happen you see therefore miracles what we are happening today is really this is unscriptural okay now let, let us come to other points of prophecy and vision you see prophesying that tomorrow this 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 things will happen in your life dear brethren how many incidents how many prophecies in the bible is given that tomorrow this this, this things will happen in anybody personal's life no where it is given in the bible you see if that was a guess what is the difference between uh, you see the astronomy which the whole world believes in other religions and all and about the bible la you see moreover you see dear brethren god pro prophets were there they prophesied so many things but their prophecy is only about concerning the nation of israel not individuals uh, you see life dear brethren uh, you see and moreover whatever they prophesied you see that was fulfilled exactly point to point not 100% in 100% only in 10% 20% we fulfilled nothing dear brethren 100 out of 100% was fulfilled that was uh, you see the prophecy done by the prophets but today you see only partially it will be fulfilled yeah? even if 10% is fulfilled you see is our uh, uh, human tendency that we trust them uh, you see moreover if that was god's this one prophecy he said that would have god would have mentioned it in the bible itself for dear brethren moreover you see there are so many prophecies already in the bible which nobody has understood you see these things has to be studied first jeremiah first chapter prophecy ezekiel 37 chapter prophecy you see isaiah 18 chapter prophecy so many prophecies are there so what why you don't you study all these prophecies you know what is the meaning of prophecy in the bible actually you see telling about jesus that is prophecy not telling about self read revelation 1910 binor brother can you read revelation 1910 Okay, sir. Uh, Revelation nineteen ten, hmm. and I fell at his. F- okay, I read my from my Bible. Hmm. Revelation. Okay, Revelation. So Revelation. One second, tell me Revelation nineteen ten nineteen chapter ten okay. verse. Nineteen chapter ten verse. Okay. Okay, sir. And this I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me. do not do that i am a fellow servant with you and with your brother and sister who hold to your testimony testimony of jesus worship god for it is the spirit of prophecy who bear testimony to jesus mm. you see that te- what is the spirit of prophecy testimony of jesus tell about mm. jesus therefore you see whatever prophecy is given in the bible it is actually all telling about jesus only so that should be the prophecy foretelling about uh, you see jesus and his kingdom dear brethren okay and uh, so many people claim no brother you know joel it is given when god shall pour out his holy spirit uh, what will happen they shall speak prophecy they shall see visions uh, many people quote those uh, verses sir let us see the meaning of that verse also uh, joel second chapter 28 and 29 Joel, second chapter, twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Uh, Ashish, brother, can you read? Okay. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall see dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. very good so here you see is you see god shall pour out uh, his spirit upon all flesh and then they shall prophesy see dreams visions etc and it says he shall also pour the sp- uh, spirit upon his servants now you think it over there is two points in this verse first thing god shall pour out the holy spirit upon all flesh second he says god shall pour out his spirit upon servants Now, if it is poured upon all flesh, why should you again pour it upon the servants? Sir? Therefore, dear brethren, this verse is actually to be considered, you see, upside down. That means the fulfillment of this prophecy now is only upon the servants, sir. the church class, only the Christians. Sir, God has given the Holy Spirit, not upon the whole world. You see, ah, the whole world is never got the Holy Spirit. Imagine the people who are all persecuting Christians; they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah, <laughs> no, dear brethren. So. hence this prophecy is only partially fulfilled this is not at all completely fulfilled so 
that explanation we can again read in, in Judges 6 chapter. You see where Gideon asked for a sign. You see, and God gives a sign that a wool is uh, wet with the dew. But the next day, you see what happens? Uh, that the wool is dry and the whole land, you see, the whole ground next to it is completely wet with the dew. That is the significance of the Holy Spirit. Now God's Holy Spirit is only upon the wool class. Judge class, the ground, you see. Uh, next to it, uh, it is not filled with the Holy Spirit. It is not uh, wet with the dew. But in Christ's kingdom, the whole world will be filled with the Holy Spirit. But church, as they are with Christ, they are not in the earth, dear brethren. Therefore, this fulfillment of the prophecy will happen in Christ's kingdom. Okay, now, you see, Christ, uh, uh, we are in the verge of where uh, Christ's second advent. We are living at the end times. Uh, see, this time, we should not believe any of these wonders and miracles. Why? You know, Jesus warned uh, that uh, a time will come when these things are done in the name of Christ also, these things are not to be trusted. Even Jesus himself doesn't trust. Why, you know? Because Jesus told, when Satan's kingdom is tottering, when Satan's kingdom is falling, you know, what will Satan do? Satan will do all these things by himself uh, so that uh, he may try to retain his kingdom. He shall do miracles and he shall do healings uh, he shall be divided within himself. That means what? He will only be the devil. He will only cast out the devil. This double acting Satan will do at this time with himself. Read Matthew 12.26. Peter brother, can you read Matthew 12.26? Okay. And if Satan cast out the Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? You see, how shall his kingdom stand? We can see that his kingdom is not standing. That means his kingdom is divided. See, Satan is casting, casting out Satan. We are living in that day. Therefore, Apostle Paul also clearly warned, you see, that those who don't believe the truth, God only shall send the devil to do these miracles and wonders. It seems. Read 2 Thessalonians. Pinor brother, read 2 Thessalonians. 2nd chapter. Uh, verse 10. Ver read from verse 10, 11, 12. 2nd okay. Thessalonians, 2nd Second... chapter. Read from verse 9, 10, sorry, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Uh, 10, 11, 12? Correct. Okay, sir. And all the ways that were weakness deceive those who are perishing they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sent them a powerful delusion hmm. so that they will believe the lie. Nay, and God and shall so, send a strong delusion, sisters, brother, so they may hmm. believe the lie because why? They did not love the truth. Continue, brother. Huh? And so that all will be condemned who have haven't believed the truth, but have delighted in uh, wickedness. Mm -hmm. See, God only shall send uh, strong delusions. Therefore, now if any of these things are happening, we should be very, very cautious. You know, what is the sign of the Holy Spirit? You see, huh? the sign of the Holy Spirit uh, is not speaking in tongues, not doing miracles, not prophesying, but understanding the truth. That is what Jesus said. Once if the Holy Spirit comes, this is what the Holy Spirit will do. It seems. Yeah? Let us read uh, John 16, 13. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read John 16, 13? Okay. How about when he, the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. See, he Not will guide you into all truth. Underline. When the Spirit comes, Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth, not false. We have studied so many truths about hell, about soul, about the Lord's Supper, dear brethren, about the hell. You see, so many things are there, dear brethren. So, this is the truth we should understand from the scriptures, not uh, these wonders, miracles, dear brethren. And moreover, you see, in all these churches, uh, they are violating the basic commandments uh, where, uh, you see, women are allowed to preach. Basic thing, Apostle Paul clearly says, uh, if any man is filled with the Holy Spirit, let him obey this thing. If they don't have such light, 
And what truth is there? What is the truth that is happening in those places? Then we need to think it over. So at last, uh, there is one more scripture that is used to, uh, you see, have faith on these uh, miracles and wonders and all these things. So let us, uh, you see, read those one also. Matthew 16, chapter 15 to 18. Uh, sorry, Mark 16, chapter 15 to 18. Uh, Ashish brother, can you read Mark 16, chapter 15 to 18? And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth and not, not shall be he that believeth not shall be damned. And these things shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongue, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink may any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Very good. See, here it says, go preach to the ends of the world. He that believes and baptized shall be saved. He that doesn't believe, he shall be damned, it seems. You see, dear brethren, Jesus said that one, if you believe, you will be saved or you shall be damned. Huh? Does the Bible say so? We need to see, first of all, is it correct what is mentioned here? Read John 3.16 and 17. Binar brother, can you read John 3.16 and 17? Okay, sir, I'll read. Uh, John, third sorry, John. John, third chapter, 16 and 17. Uh, okay, sir, uh, 16 to 17. Mm. Okay, sir. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, huh? but to save the world through yes. him. Underline, Jesus never came to condemn, but to save the world. Now, how can Jesus say here, I will condemn? Therefore, dear brother, and we need to think it over. This is how we need to study the Bible. Here a little, there a little. The meaning has to be taken from the Bible, in the Bible, from the Bible only. And next, what does he say? You see, if anybody takes, uh, you see, uh, uh, what, uh, a poisonous snake, uh, if they drink poison also, what will happen? Nothing will happen, it seems. Okay? Okay, now you are all Christians, no? Peter brother, Vishnu brother, Binar brother, are you all Christians? Yes. Okay. Binar brother, you are a Christian? Uh, no, we are not Christian, but we are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Good. Okay. You are a disciple of Jesus. Okay, good. Vishnu brother, you are a Christian or you are a disciple? Okay. Now, here what did Jesus say? If he is a disciple, if he takes poison, if he drinks anything that is harmful, nothing will happen to him. If he takes serpent, nothing will happen to him. Okay, now let us do a test. You are all disciples of Christ. You are all Christians. Okay, why don't you take one bottle of poison and drink it right now. Will you do it? Will you do it? Peter brother, Vishnu brother, Vinod brother, will you do it? Yes sir, no? No. Yes sir. No. You will do it, Vishnu brother. Good. Vinod brother, will you do it? Tell me your opinion. We will see what the Bible says. Hmm. Binod brother, will you do it? You're wondering what to what to reply. Should I reply yes or no? Because Bible says yes, but you can't do it. So you want uh, you are feeling uh, very privileged to answer. Dear brother, and you see, hmm. we should see the answer from the Bible. Did Jesus ever do this one? Correct, no. See, taking poison and drinking or holding a serpent in a hand, what does it mean? Dear brethren, that is tempting God. You see, this is what the devil did for Jesus. What did the devil say to Jesus? If you are the son of God, fall from the pinnacle of the temple. Why? If you fall, Lord will send the angels to protect you. Now, did Jesus fall? No. Jesus did not fall. But what did the what was the reply of Jesus? What did the reply? Huh? What did Jesus reply? Read Matthew 4, 7. Binar Buddha, 
Please read Matthew 4, 7, brother. What was the reply of Jesus? Jesus? Let us see. Matthew 4, chapter 7, verse. Yeah. Brother, you are there? Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tame the Lord thy God. Ah, Jesus said it is written, You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus never did things that was to tempt his God, dear brethren. So taking poisonous things, holding snakes in our hand, it is nothing but tempting the Lord. God's children should never do it, dear brethren. You see, and think that God would protect them. God would never allow such things to happen. We should not be doing that one. And what does he say? Who or uh, yeah, they place their hand upon any sick, they should be healed. It seems. And then why should there be Christian hospital? Go in all over the world. Majority of the big, big hospitals are Christians. St. John Hospital, St. Martha Hospital, Philomena Hospital. You see, Christian Medical College. Dear brother, why these things are built? Instead of building a hospital, we should put free treatment. Whoever comes, just lay their hand and pray and send them. They, they will be healed on the spot. No. Why that thing is not done? Dear brother, and so if you look into this verse of Mark 16, chapter 15 to 18, you see, this is not there in the original Bible at all. If anybody has got a Bible, you see, you see, the flower brackets, they would have put the square brackets of flower brackets for Mark 16, chapter 9 to 20. You see, if you have anybody in the Bible, just see if they put any brackets there or if they are given any footnote there. Those scriptures are spurious. This is not there in the original Bible at all. Therefore, dear brethren, this is unscriptural and moreover, from the scripture point of view, these things are violating God's basic things. What did Jesus say? No sign shall be given to these people except the sign of Jonah. Dear brethren, God's children have to trust the word of God than the signs and wonders. The word of God is sufficient for us to make a calling election sure, dear brethren. More than that one, that nothing that is required. Our faith is trusted on the word of God, not on these signs, dear brethren. So, dear brethren, when we have sickness, when you are not feeling well, it is a very good thing that we go you see, to a doctor and get healed. You see, get take medicines. What did Jesus say? Huh? Huh? Patients require doctor. Doctor is required for the patients. That means doctor were there during the days of Jesus. So patients require doctor. So Jesus himself told doctor is necessary. So we should be very careful in trusting these miracles, wonders that is happening in these days. So this is the end of the class of tongues and miracles. I hope uh, you all understood. Any doubts, any questions anybody is having, you can please ask. Anybody, any questions, any doubts? Binod brother, any doubts? Uh, brother Raj, I believe they certainly have doubts. So let me ask in ask them in Nepali. doubts cross the you can ask in Nepali, so I will try to interpret. Kesa Peter. Peter? Peter, you know what Yes, yes. Kesa, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to doubt what I'm explanation of Okay, brother. The brother Raju they don't have right now. Good. So we can in this prayer. Sure. Any doubts, any questions you still have? 
we can definitely ask next week not a issue at all so in the end we'll have a word of prayer 